What's going on everybody? Welcome back in. Today, again, purveyor choice. We're gonna review a truck that you cannot find in the game, but you can buy it if you do have the cash. A lot of us have leaned on this truck in early game, so without further ado, here is the International Paystar 5070. Hope you guys enjoy this. If you like the channel and its content, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, and please share the video as well. So let's get into this. Roll the tape. International Paystar 5070 was developed for both on and off road use. The Paystar project was the largest commercial market sold by International. International eventually redesigned its vehicle line in 2017 to the HX series, which is coming to a live server here shortly in the Phase 4 release. The Paystar is a vehicle that can be viewed as a starter vehicle, but it's what I like to call a carry vehicle. You can buy this vehicle as early as level 2 in the game through selling off assets and vehicles. Through doing this, you gain a vehicle that will carry you throughout the game, hence calling it a carry vehicle. The term carry vehicle or carry truck basically just means that it makes things easier. So before we dive into the pros and cons, let's check out some base stats. The International Paystar 5070 is classified as an off-road truck weighing 9.9 .9 tons. In its stock configuration, it has a power to weight of A, a durability of A-, fuel consumption B, Fuel capacity is 240 liters or 64 gallons. It comes with a stock suspension. Its tires also come stock with a 46 inch highway tire. It has switchable all wheel drive and switchable diff lock as well. All right, let's dive into the pros and cons of the International Paystar 5070. Bad news first as always. So coming in at the number one downside, gas guzzler and tank size. I believe we all have our personal limitations and reservations when it comes to SnowRunner. For me, the Paystar pushes that limitation. Like I've mentioned in recent videos, any vehicle that burns more than 4.0 to 4.5 gallons per minute is considered a bad fuel economy vehicle. However, I must mention that those numbers aren't too bad if you're carrying heavy loads or also hauling up hills. The 5070 can easily get above the 5 gallon per minute range under load and sometimes touch 6 gallons per minute. Bad fuel economy coupled with a small 240 liter 64 gallon tank makes the Paystar's range very limited. Setting up fuel stops will help mitigate this, but there's another feature later that will help as well, so stick around. Downside number two, no tire height upgrade. Usually when stumbling upon a race suspension upgrade means bigger tires along with more ground clearance. Well, not so much with the 5070. The Paystar will indeed gain more ground clearance, but just forget about getting larger tires than 46 inches. So this might be one of the biggest letdowns for me because I just believe that, you know, who doesn't love a bigger tire for an off-road game? Although realistically the Paystar still crushes most things without huge tires, but it would give added clearance to its axles, which would help. Coming in at downside number 3, it only has one engine option. Something I believe we all look forward to is upgrades when finding or purchasing a stock truck. When you get the Paystar into the garage and start panning through its features, you notice there is only one engine. For a lot of drivers, this is a huge downside, and I agree that an engine upgrade would be nice, but the Paystar's engine is rather good. Now take into account that the 5070 only weighs 9.9 .9 tons, and with an increased power to weight, it might harm its mud crawling ability due to the increased wheel spin from increased power. Overall, this downside isn't huge, but it can deter drivers who want to see that S or S plus power range. Downside number four, low snorkel. I must say that there's not a lot of deep river or water crossings in the game, but due to this vehicle only having a short snorkel merits its way onto the downsides list. Places like the flooded foothills in Wisconsin might give you some trouble, however the Paystar does sit pretty high despite not having a tall snorkel. So with all that being said, just be mindful of this limitation or you might be recovering or rescuing this one. Coming in at the number 5 downside, unstable. A downside that just would not elude this list is the instability of the 5070. With the raid suspension upgrade, this vehicle is on the same tippy level as the Fleet Star, the GMC, and the mighty ANK Mark 38. Personally, this downside influenced my decision to not use the race suspension. The number two downside and this downside both seem to point drivers to not use that upgrade. In its stock configuration, the Paystar already sits pretty high like the Kodiak C70 without the race suspension, 
and it still has larger tires than it as well. It basically all depends on your personal limitations. In my opinion, I feel the Paystar just performs a lot better without the race suspension, and it's also a little bit more stable. And finally, coming in at our number 6 downside, it upgrades later. Although the International 5070 has one lone exclusive upgrade, the race suspension, it's not picked up until you discover White Valley, Alaska. Previously, I explained how I don't feel this upgrade is necessary, but other drivers might find this downside frustrating. Not being able to upgrade a vehicle relatively quick is a downside because we all love to put our most upgraded trucks to the test. The Paystar in this case would have to wait. If you love the suspension upgrade, then this is a huge downside, but if not, then you can just still enjoy it. Alright, enough of the bad news. Here are the upsides for the International Paystar 5070. Coming in at upside number one, you can buy it really early. A lot of drivers in SnowRunner have caught upon the use of the 5070 as early as level 2. I must admit myself, I am one of those drivers. Although this truck cannot be found for free or by task, it can be acquired with good old cash. For a little more than $82,000 in game, you can basically purchase a complete off-road truck. As a player who struggled to the point of almost quitting, this vehicle saved me. The best way to acquire the Paystar in early game is to simply round up trailers and vehicles and then just sell them off until you have enough. During the early parts of the game, highway tires can really limit where you can go, but this next upside changes the game. Upside number 2, tire upgrade without level requirement. To add to the fact that you're acquiring an off-road vehicle this early in the game, the Paystar is very unique with its tire options, despite never receiving larger ones. Upon buying the Paystar, it comes stock with a highway tire, but immediately you can buy the all-terrain tires without the level 6 restriction. There really are only a few vehicles in the game that have this upside. Vehicles like the Tega and the BM17, they have to wait to level 6. With the Paystar, you can immediately equip them. Instantly you ascend from wading and winching through mud to walking through most of the areas in Black River. This feature essentially turned my whole gaming experience around by giving me training wheels during my rookie season of off-roading. Also, I must mention that the ANK Mark 38 and the Paystar are the only North American off-road trucks to have a mud tire option. In addition, it also is one of the few North American trucks, period, to have a mud tire option. I love this feature. Upside number 3, switchable all-wheel drive and switchable diff lock. So I've mentioned that the 5070 is a carry vehicle, but it's not an easy mode vehicle that has always on all-wheel drive and always on diff lock. Personally, I believe the switchable feature gives drivers more control and makes for a more cerebral experience instead of just holding the gas trigger in automatic. This upside allows drivers the option to either add more power or save fuel based upon their comfort level. As mentioned before, the Paystar is a gas guzzler, so switching off all-wheel drive will help you make longer trips. It also will give you the option to call upon that added bonus of all-wheel drive and diff lock when needed. I do feel however that if it had always on diff lock it would make this vehicle even more powerful. Coming in at upside number 4, it teaches you about off-roading. Like the Fleet Star but much more capable, the Paystar helps teach you the game through our number 3 upside. This upside encourages thought when entering different terrains instead of ascended attitude with always on diff lock and always on all wheel drive. Now hold up, I'm not against any of those vehicles, but when you have options and you're given adversity, we tend to critically think. For me, this makes the game a much more enjoyable experience. Even the downsides of the Paystar will help make drivers better overall, but that's just my humble opinion. Upside number 5, Utility. Once again, like the GMC and the Fleet Star, the Paystar can use a crane, a sideboard bed, and attach a hitch trailer, giving it great utility. This adds even more value to this vehicle, especially for those who love to use cranes for cargo loading. Also, the 5070 can use mostly all the add-ons and trailer attachments. To be short, it basically can do it all. And finally, at upside number 6, ground clearance. As mentioned, the International has great ground clearance despite having low sitting differential axles. On this channel, I praise ground clearance a lot, I know, but it's for good reason. As we progress through this game, the mud and the snow just keeps getting deeper. 
even without the Erase upgrade for the Paystar, it still has pretty good ground clearance. I've watched a fellow streamer play at level 2 with a Paystar on the Flooded Foothills map and my jaw practically hit the floor. In my own hardcore playthrough, I was playing the same areas at level 6 with a stock Tega and a slightly upgraded DM-17 and that proved very challenging. With that being said, through observation and my own gameplay, the International just seems very capable in endgame deep areas. So in conclusion, I'm bullish when it comes to the Paystar. It's really one of my favorite trucks in the game. The vehicle comes basically fully upgraded in its stock configuration. It's really not a heavy off-road truck, and its power sits about A or A- depending on add-ons, but it will do just about every job in the game that you ask it to. I also must mention that it isn't as durable as some of the off-road trucks found in Russia, like the Tega. Like I've covered, there are only two North American off-road trucks with mud tire options, and the Paystar claims one of those spots. I've complained a lot recently for the lack of mud tire options on North American trucks recently, so it's kind of a relief to see that the Paystar has this option. To be honest, the 5070's performance is quite eye-opening. It might be one of the better stock vehicles in the game, like the Azov 64131. I believe this vehicle allows drivers to fully experience what an off-road truck is all about compared to other vehicles found in Michigan and Alaska. Although I have to say that the Tega and the Vorons most likely hold a better performance value, the Paystar is still a contender representing America. I hope this review gave you a fresh new perspective on the International Paystar 5070. Please smash the like button, definitely share the video with someone who is struggling with the game, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Hope y'all have a wonderful day, God bless, and stay upright.